This is a HeadGum Podcast. Welcome to Melro 210, a sideshow of the We Hate Movies podcast. Please put on your sunscreen and remain indoors. This is a confectionary treat in increasingly dark times. Mm -hmm. I am joined, as always, by my good friends and co-hosts, Eric Siska. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Chris Cavan. I didn't know if I was supposed to. I didn't know if I was supposed to say anything. Chris, yes, uh, hi. hi. We're extending hi. the New York pause. <laughs> We're extending it two weeks. Uh, Andrew Jupin, yo, and uh, I am Stephen Sadak, as I did not say earlier. Hi, we Stephen. Are... Hi, how's it going? Let me take a pause and talk to you yeah. for a second. Pause. <laughs> you can pause, but don't you idle, or Billy Idol will come after you. Oh, uh, shit, yeah. Dude, Billy Idol should have been the gym teacher on this show. <laughs> oh, that could have worked out swimmingly. We do have a mention of a gym teacher we'll get to later. Oh, dude. And that... Jesus Christ, Brenda. <laughs> uh, this is uh, the first time. Uh, we're, uh, by the way, this is Beverly Hills 90210. We do Beverly Hills 90210 on Mondays. On Thursdays, we drop a Melrose place. Here, we're, we're back in high school again. Adjust your backpacks. Uh, it is the first time. Original air date. October the 25th, 1990. This is a and sexy like, episode. I got to get the, It's like, a very sexy episode. We're finally getting the sexy kids that and, that Steve promised. <laughs> and like every fucking episode now, it starts with Brenda and Brandon flirting half clothed. I, dude, this... I am waiting for the fucking insane tab on Pornhub to open up on this fucking show, dude. The sh start like the, the sh hanging out with your sister shirtless when you're 16 and she's like barely dressed too. It's this shared bathroom I'm not into. Brenda, we got to practice kissing. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, it's like I think the thing is like it's cool. They're twins. They're like they're half of the same entity. Like <laughs> So really, they'd just be kissing themselves. Oh, it's just ringers over here. Yeah, it's just <laughs> masturbation. If you're if you're twins and you fuck your twin, it's really just masturbation. Exactly right. Yeah. No, no, it? no, Brenda. We just we watch each other do it. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's, that's oh, what we do. Man, it's, it's legal that way. That's now that what no, we do. Now that nobody's listening, <laughs> uh, I want to. I want to say now that nobody's listening. There's. <laughs> Chris Cabot inspired me on last week's uh, Melrose Place portion of this adventure uh, to really start paying attention to the subtle variations on the opening credits. Okay. And just like little things that you're getting here and there. And especially in early days of television shows, these things kind of like change just a little bit as far as like what clips they're inserting during like the, you know, it's this actor, it's this actor or whatever. A new one that I noticed, at least, and it may have already come up <clears throat> in previous opening credits, but I had to pause it. I was laughing so hard. Is when we get to our good friend, Mr. James Eckhouse, there's a clip of him playing like this tiny keyboard. Oh my God, are you? Uh, that, that, that episode is like the moon landing. I'm so excited to talk. I mean, it's just. Dude, it, look, he looks like a little kid, like, la la la, do do do. Me and, play piano. And but that that is one of those theme song things that sticks with him forever. Like it's like ten years of him on this show, and it's always Ed James Eckhouse. Dee, 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 dee. <laughs> I fucking love it. I also because it's also kind of to the beat of the theme too. It's yep. like he's playing the theme song for you. <laughs> well, they do that in this episode. Like all the, it's like secession where like you literally can't have a piece of music that's not that fucking theme song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like it, like to go through a piano version at some romantic moment in this episode, and then there is a fucking synth version yep. that blew my head away. Yep, it's fucking great, dude. It's like when people submit 
uh, variations on the We Hate Movies theme to us, which I fucking love and keep doing it, man. I'd lo- I was thinking actually, I'd love like a '90s like pop Ooh. synth version. So Dude. so get get on it, ladies and gentlemen. Anybody with a saxophone as well is welcome to join in. <laughs> oh fuck, dude! Our theme song played on a saxophone. Please, someone get on that. I'm begging yeah. you. Please. We would, we ha- we would have to throw out all the other theme songs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we don't uh, plug them enough. Uh, our theme song originally made by Hurrah Bolt of Light. You could find they've. Some great, I don't think they make music much anymore under that label, but they, their album is awesome and find it on Bandcamp. Uh, agreed. But, uh, so we yeah, start this episode. I mean, my, my question also about this, is there a third door to this bathroom or is it just a corridor bathroom? It's a connected by Brenda and Brandon's room bathroom. Yeah. So that Sid, Jim and Sydney would have no way into this bathroom. No, exactly. So all Brenda and Brandon have to do, man... <laughs> click, click, oh, lock those doors. Someone's taking a bath. Well, oh, oh, are we saying that Jim and, and fucking, what's her name, Cindy? Cindy yeah. Walsh, my friend. Did you, yeah, Jim and Cindy. Are they bad parents? Are you fucking serious? <laughs> you want to play this game with me? <laughs> uh, fucking I, disgusting people. Dude, my phone was blowing up all night with Jim Ca- with Chris Cabin, not Jim Cabin, Chris Cabin talking so much shit about Cindy Walsh. I cannot even, things Dude. I won't even repeat. It was I. I was I was shocked at mm-hmm. some of the, some of the stuff on our group thread about Brandon, and it was like, okay, you're. Yeah, I'm talking to myself like you're not watching it until tomorrow, so maybe not pay that much attention to it. But I couldn't look away. These texts from Chris Cabin were like a fucking car crash. <laughs> he was um, right though. I fired it up this morning, and Cindy is a piece of shit. She yep. fucking sucks. 100%. Cindy Wall sucks. Usually she's so cookie cutter. Oh gee whiz, and like this episode. She, it's a it's a it's a parenting disaster that she gives. Like you know what I mean. Like this is a, so this is a par- almost a parent's worst nightmare. It's the is- Hindenburg of parenting decisions. So where uh, we open up that they're in the bathroom, they're just talking. Brandon's doing this like Dennis Leary routine about fucking air quality, and I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up, dude. It was like Dennis Leary <laughs> if he was like ten years old. There was fucking serious boomer territory. Yeah, how man. about this, babe? Okay, heat wave in November. Does that sound normal, huh, babe? <laughs> Right. Well, see, that's that's Dennis Miller, friend. We're talking Dennis Leary, <laughs> right? But even still, yeah, the Dennis is just... connecting. We've been in quarantine a long time, and I have to look at fucking Brandon's tiny nipples an awful lot in this episode. I was staring directly into Brandon <laughs> Priestley's nipples, you, Jason I, Priestley's wait, nipples, I, and I was you, like, "Whoa, you, you, you absolutely would need the fucking diamond dealer's little like the <laughs> several <laughs> microscopes. Oh, oh, the loop, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can to get a look what at is, this thing. What is with the cross he's wearing? That's a great uh, it's question. A, it's a religious symbol. <laughs> I no, I think it's just a '90s thing. We kind of <laughs> no. I mean, I, I'm serious though. I mean, like, yes, obviously, no one Brent, else the in the Walsh family is wearing that shit. Yeah. Well, you're not like uh, yeah. I think more to what Steve is saying is like, especially in the '90s. I'm sure it's still around now. It's got to be. Uh, like you just Christianity. Some people just had a chain. Like you just wore a chain like that. Like I got a thing. I remember, I don't know if it was for, like, my fucking confirmation or my uh, uh, first communion, one one of them fucking cult ceremonies. (laughs) And, you know, it's just like, that's, like, your grandmother got it for you. And it's like, now you can take the Lord with you wherever you go. And I'm like, well, make up your fucking mind. Is he inside me the whole time or not? (laughs) The confirmation is is such a Catholic scam. Uh, I'm sorry, I got to cut you off. No, I just said you. Thinking about the Lord (laughs) Lord inside of you. Because, like... If you're a Catholic, born and bred like I am, and Andrew is, you 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 get you get your baptism. You got no choice in that. And then, like when you're 13, it's like, well, now it's your choice to get confirmed into the. And it's like, I, I still I'm 13. I'm not like fucking making my own decisions now. All right. You know, I, I had it worse though, dude. I don't know why it was, but my church did it way later. I wasn't confirmed until I was a junior in high school. Oh wow. Okay. Wow. And at least by that point, though, I was like, you know, a, a fully uh, fully ish independent person. You know, I had like a driver's license i could go do things by myself so i scammed the scammers and i took all of that confirmation money and bought a fucking six stereo system with <laughs> it you I was do? Ba- my mother was furious i was baptized catholic and then my my parents left the church they thought it was good yeah, move, they, thought dude, it was bullshit. <laughs> they got out when the getting was good <laughs> in the early 90s aren't you supposed to spend the confirmation money on your own like huge wooden cross <laughs> Yeah, here's your confirmation money, Andrew. Now off to the lumber yard. <laughs> now you... carry it through town, and we will whip you, and then we will nail you to it. 
<laughs> oh, Andrew for, uh, fell four times. He's not a true Catholic. <laughs> Uh, so, anyways, uh, that's what you wanted to hear is Catholic stuff on this show. Why no, not? No, so um, they uh, Brandon is just expounding stuff. They're, everyone's kind of going to bed. It's late. Uh, he gets a call um, from uh, his uh, – Cindy Walsh breaks in and is like, hey, it's Cheryl on the phone. And Brandon's like, Minneapolis, Cheryl? Wait, what? And you find out that Brandon's kind of had this girlfriend this whole time or – you know, he, he broke up with somebody just as he was leaving Minneapolis, who he's never mentioned ever. Right, and- but this is the move, though. I'm sorry. Like, you have to cut off. Like, you're moving from Minneapolis yeah. to, to Los Angeles? Sure. Yeah, yeah. You're cutting off that relationship, dude, right? And move. if she calls you, Definitely. hang up. <laughs> you got to keep those tiny nipples unattached, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to attach them with some nipple clamps or something, just so you don't lose them. <laughs> so, uh, but the, what's great is also, I was doing the math on this, like, what time is it? Like 10 30, 11 o'clock? This, this girl is calling like 1 a.m. Minneapolis time. That's a good 12. call because Brenda definitely, because the phone rings and she's like, oh man, dad's going to be so mad. She He hates when my friends call after 11. Yeah, so it's like 11 30. It's like 1 30 a.m. Minneapolis time. And this girl's calling like, oh hey, Brandon, good to catch up. By the way, I'm stopping in to visit you guys this weekend. And he's Outrageous. like, oh awesome. And Cindy Walsh is like, oh gosh, a nice Minneapolis girl's coming to my house. <laughs> She's so excited. It's like a weird. She, uh, uh, Cindy Walsh. She tries to fucking have it both ways in this episode. She tries to have her cake and eat it too because she's so excited that this Cheryl, nice Cheryl from Minneapolis, hon, she's going to come visit you here in Beverly Hills, don't you know? And she's like, so like, oh, Jim, what do you think? You think they're going to rekindle that spark or what? <laughs> she's even. And then eaves- what this girl is this? She's eavesdropping on the fucking phone call. Yeah, and when she, the girl shows up, though, dude, it's all like, oh, no, Jim, now they're going to fuck. I can't believe this. It's like, Cindy, you cannot have this both ways. You enabled the a- fucking <laughs> Exactly. Was this a thing in the 90s where you were allowed to be like, oh, yeah. Oh, you're going to fly out here in a day? That's cool. One day from now, 24 hours? Yeah. Okay, that's that's interesting. It's well, like- pre-9-11, dude, it was much easier to just hop on a plane, I guess. She's I'm- an unaccompanied minor. They've got somebody you have to be like, oh, okay, I'm going to call your mom in the morning, hon, just to check in, just to make sure what her flight time is. And look, you have to pick this girl up. Like, you know what I mean? This is a child coming to your home yep. from flying to your house. You ha- you absolutely have to pick her up and drive her to the airport. No cabs. Where the hell did she get this money from to fly? Great well, question. As we, as Maybe it's learn... confirmation money. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, as we learn at the end of the episode, or like maybe She's halfway a bank through, Cheryl in... <laughs> well, she maybe, but she ran away from home, so maybe she fucking stole a wad out of mom's uh, drawer nice. or something, you know? Mom's wad. But like, yeah, <laughs> but like, even like, I understand like a sleepover, like if Kelly's coming over for the weekend, you don't really have to do too much legwork as a Cindy Walsh, you know what I mean? Like, you ask if everybody's cool with it, you don't have to like talk about it, everyone's a little bit older. But again, flying to my house, absolutely, I gotta have a conversation with your mother. Yeah, yeah, because this is like, now now she is in the hands of the Walshes, no. you know what I mean? And this is, I think, exactly what she's, or maybe it's Jim is trying to express in one scene. You're you're on the hook here. That girl ODs in your bathroom. You're going to jail. Yep, absolutely right. <laughs> Question number one, am I feeding this fucking kid? <laughs> As Great a, question. Absolutely. Now you got it. Now you're a fucking. Now you're up to your ears in fucking hamburger meat. Oh, geez, hon. <laughs> shouldn't have fired that Mexican from last week. She could have been making some of those disgusting enchiladas. Get the big ragu bottle from Sam's Club. The big oh, one. God. <laughs> oh, God, ragu. Oh, oh, I'm, oh, I'm vomiting. Oh, yeah, the old um, world style. There's a little guy in a gondola on it or whatever. But this is the Costco yeah. version. It's so big, so there's an actual guy in it with a boat. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. It's not even ragu. It's Kirkland brand tomato <laughs> sauce now with oregano. Oh, dude, Minneapolis style, man. <laughs> oh, geez, hon, you really sprung for the good sauce. It's got the little guy guy on the boat there <laughs> oh minneapolis style it's got apples in it <laughs> it's got peas you know what, and but you know what 
<laughs> yep, that's that's what I was yeah, just gonna say, definitely. dude. The abhorrent spaghetti sauce recipe of putting peas and carrots in it—that's fucking culinary right. terrorism. Yes. Oh, 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 wait! You called you call this spaghetti sauce? Uh, uh, That—that's actually applesauce here. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to school. There's some speed metal. Uh, I mean, we always have to talk about the placeholder music. That's obviously from some. You know, it was it was a pop song, and now it's whatever the fuck. It's like for some reason it's speed metal this time around. It's very odd. Was it uh, speed metal? It felt like speed metal to me. Like, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, there was like, I was trying to see... Um, it sounded like the dueling banjos. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to like Google some of the lyrics because some of these songs in the episode like sounded like they were real songs. Yes. I just didn't recognize them. Um, so we, uh, we, we opened on uh, Brandon and Dylan in robotics class yet again. <laughs> I love it. And Dude, where was fucking Scott, man? I have to say, we can't be in this technology lab and not have Scott around. Steve and Scott, credits, credit only, not appearing in this episode. Oh, that's, it's, it's tough. Uh, this episode, I have to say, on the whole, is tough because this is super Brenda and Brandon heavy. Sure. Oh. And like, you know, like, yeah, Ian Ziering got a, uh, got a week off. Uh, we Very little David Silver. It, some Dylan. It's a Walsh family Christmas. It's, uh, you know, it, it's hell on wheels. This is like. Did someone say hell on wheels? I, I sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, Bohannon. Oh, Bohannon's well, my teacher, and I'm gonna babysit for him, and I want to fuck him. Oh, dude, yeah, we got to talk about Bohannon, this baby, te- baby this uh, teacher, Mister. What's his face here? I'll pull it up. Know. Steve, were you about to say baby teacher? A babysitter teacher. I, I was about to say baby teacher. Yes. Matt Brody is this guy's name, Mr. Yeah, Brody. Yeah, what By the, a name. Can I tell you, I looked up this guy's credit, and I want to find this more than anything. I'm sure it's not streaming anywhere. Uh, he played, he was the guy who played <laughs> Captain Power in Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future, which is a TV series from 1987 to 1988, where a group of guerrilla fighters battle the evil machine forces that dominate the future Earth. I'm so that into sounds this, amazing. I can't even tell you. S- Steve, uh, I passed out when you were reading the description. <laughs> I'm giving a look for it right now, Steve. Don't you worry. <laughs> oh, dude, these outfits are amazing. Holy mackerel. Okay. Uh, so anyways, he's Captain Power. No, he's like the hunky uh, algebra teacher and Brenda, uh, Kelly, and Donna. Welcome back to the show, Tori Spelling, but not really. Yeah. Uh, it, are, they're all swooning over him and blah, blah, blah. He's the hot, hot, hot hunky teacher. And he asks Brenda to st- stay a little later after class, Ooh. and she's like, "Oh, cool! This guy's gonna fuck me and go to jail." Um, <laughs> oh now here's God. here's the thing. Here's the thing about this teacher. What's his name? Mister What? Mister Brody. Mister Brody. I don't know what Brenda's fucking problem is, but one look at this guy, and I was like, "What are you blind? <laughs> the the mullet on um, this mullet is." Out of but, this, this is like is... Dennis Millerian yes, level. Something she could dig her fingers into, you know. Exactly. Sure, <laughs> oh, it was true. the style at the time. Yeah, sexual prowess. I mean, like, oh my god, do you know that hunk Jerry Seinfeld? <laughs> <laughs> Just dripping from him, dude. Oh, dude this he's fantasy... got a Captain Power bullet, actually. If you think about it. <laughs> oh, that's actually true. This fucking uh, fantasy that she has, though. He's like, he's like, uh, oh Brenda, you know, can you can I see you after class for a second? And uh, fucking Donna and Kelly like go wait out in the hallway, and she's like, "Yes, what is it?" And th- there's this fantasy where like this dude's face is like lit with like soft orange light, and there's like wind blowing, and he's like, "Brenda, let's run away to Switzerland and hide in a village somewhere. No one will know who we are. It'll just be us forever." And it's like. I don't need this show to have fantasy no. sequences like that. It's the same thing when they do it. They've done it at least once. Oh, yeah. They did it out of Melrose Place with the fucking Dr. Ruth bit. And you're just like, dude, no. It's just too saved by the belly for my yep. taste. Yeah, well, I yep, mean, those exactly. you just named three 90s things, you know? I think it was just in, <laughs> yeah, in the cultural zeitgeist yeah. at the time. Everyone I'm, wanted to daydream because life right. was too I fucking need- easy. I just need him to look better than this. I need him to not look like he's selling me a TV. <laughs> That's a great yes. He does kind of just look like. Uh, can I help you? You gonna what? What can I do to get this TV in the back of your car today? So she's oh, Brenda. Um, Brenda, she's I want to put a TV in you. <laughs> Let's make love at the whiz. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, people made love at the Wiz, and you're right. You don't have sex at the Wiz. You make, you make love, love at the Wiz. <laughs> in the recliners. <laughs> so she, uh, he's, she fantasizes that he's going to invite her on a skiing trip or some bullshit. But actually, no. Would you mind babysitting for me and my wife? And she's like, sure, I'd love to go through your things. Uh, this is, I think this is something that you wouldn't be able to get away with now or probably ever. It's just a bad again. If, it's a bad idea having yeah. a, a, one of your students coming to your house under any pretext. It's a conflict of interest. Yeah, no, you just, you're, yeah, you're asking for it. It's just like there's too many things that can go wrong. The next thing you know, you know, some fucking dude's knocking on the door at your house. There's a camera crew there. It's fucking hard copy. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Or Mr. Simpson, no! <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Or if somebody uh, wants to, comes to your house while you're out, out at the movies and they're there to do the devil's business. You don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> exactly right. It's good to do some devil shit. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Brody comes back and throws a can in her face. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so, and Brenda was on a horsey. <laughs> <laughs> it's a California man. That shit happens all the time. Exactly. That's um, true. So uh, Dylan and Brandon in robotics class uh, create sentient life, and uh, that's exciting. <laughs> oh, shit, man. It's a positronic net. Oh, look. We finally did it. It's Scottbot. <laughs> <laughs> that's how the Cylons started. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Scott Bot, your big day's coming up. <laughs> yeah, it's Scott Bot. He fucking executes the attack on Mars from Picard. <laughs> so, uh, but like, no, Dylan's like, oh, your girlfriend's coming. I didn't know you have a girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, were you guys doing it or what? And he's like, well, no, we never did it yet, man. But like, she's my, you know, and he's, he's like, you know, I just told her that I don't believe in long distance relationships, which is the right thing. I mean, it, you're yeah. in high school. Like, what the fuck? It doesn't make any sense. So uh, that's his thing. That that's Brenda's thing. That we're racing home to to meet up with Cheryl. Cheryl's not due for a couple of hours. She comes in earlier. She's already there. And Cindy Walsh is like, "Oh, we were just gabbing about the old neighborhood. Who died? Who whatever?" Uh, <laughs> nuclear <laughs> grade drop in. Like <laughs> you've got to give me a lot more fucking information here, lady. Even yeah, if you're I, a runaway, you should know better than do this. You need weeks' notice. You know, you're coming over to my house to to sleep. Yeah, I need a few weeks. Yep. Yeah, if I have to get the fucking fold out mattress out of the attic, yeah, I need a week for that. You better <laughs> believe it. So like she's like she's there and like instantly her and Brandy are very Brandon are very touchy feely kind of a thing and like Cindy's like oh maybe having a a horny teenage girl under my supervision was too much to ask. This weekend is quickly becoming too hot to handle, hun. <laughs> so uh, she's sleeping in Brenda's room. Obviously, they're kind of getting t getting ready for bed. Uh, Brandon uh, goes up in the shared bathroom, of course, goes up yep. to her and is like, "Yo, come by my room and look, a you know, give it forty five minutes and come into my room. We'll we'll fuck. I mean, or, or whatever, you know, we'll we'll do some stuff, yeah, man. It's very. It implied. seems like it's, it's a thing where, like, back in Milwaukee. <clears throat> like Minneapolis, my friend. Or M Minneapolis, excuse me, you're right. Um, back in Minneapolis, they made a pact, like, okay, at the end of senior year, like, yeah. we're going to have sex, we're going to lose it to each other, like, it's going to be beautiful, blah, 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 blah. And then it, Jim Walsh, you know, walks in one day, like, honey, we're moving to Beverly Hills, and the whole plan was quashed. Like, this feels like they had set something up before, and now it's like, yeah. Brandon is all like, we have some unfinished business, <laughs> Cheryl. Brandon wants to fuck. <laughs> yeah. Brandon wants to fuck. <laughs> So uh, she's like, oh, I don't know. It has to be special because it's our first time and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, it's special anyway. Come on. Come on. And then he says the most romantic thing in the world. Don't say no. <laughs> yep. Yep. Holy shit, dude. So she, I fucking slid off the couch. Well, it's like, oh, are you going to kick me out if I do? Like, now I'm at, at, at your sort of whim here. I don't want to go to a fucking hostel. Yeah, because like, oh, whoops, what's that? I'm 17 years old. I'm in a strange city. I have no money because I'm a child. Cheryl, <laughs> you won't go to a hostel. You'll go to a hospital if you say no. <laughs> 
So she goes into Brenda's room, kind of gets ready for bed. This is the crazy, like, catch up on the old classmates conversation where she's like, yep. oh, do you remember Miss old Miss Gerhardt? Oh, she's like, yeah, the one everyone thought was gay. Remember yeah. that gym teacher yes. we thought was gay? Jesus. Yeah, it's but it's like, oh no, she married um Scott such and such who graduated the year before. It's like, what? Oh my god, that's well, kind of This is kind of interesting, right? Cuz cuz Brenda wants to fuck her teacher and here is a teacher that fucks a student and they get <laughs> married apparently, which actually happened at my high school. The gym teacher Is that right? Yeah, the gym teacher. It's the <gasps> same thing. It was a guy and like he ruined his life with his family and everything. And like <laughs> I think he got fired and he was like sleeping with some chick and then like they got together after she graduated. Oh, but she was a student of right. his. Right. Which is just like Oh wow. It's weird to we set, definitely had... set your sights so low, then you graduate high school and now you're <laughs> like living next to the high school still. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, is, is that similar to uh, my sociology teacher that got fired a couple years after I graduated for jerking off in the parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. What was he, Wait what was he looking second. at? What was he looking at? <laughs> well, it was an all-boys uh, Catholic high school, so you figure it out. Good Well, gravy. maybe he had a mag in the in the in the car. Yeah, <laughs> he had a tiger beat, like, <laughs> like a, a true <laughs> happiness situation. <laughs> yeah, we we had a fucking history teacher that was fucking. Uh, uh, it was a, it was a man student uh, had a had a fucking disgusting statutory rape affair with a student, and I don't know if the dude ever got caught, and then like she was of age at some point, and like. This guy was like the dumbest, dumb as dog dick, fucking broed out lacrosse history teacher. Oh man, I hated that guy. I, f- <laughs> I fucking hated that guy and wanted him to go to jail so bad. I mean, the world is nothing but happiness subplots and fucking election B plots. That's <laughs> true. That's, uh, and, uh, and and increasingly, it's turning into contagion as well. Let's yeah, yeah. not forget that. That's, that's been the A story for a hey, little while now. Hey, history, ha- I mean, the world at large has a great taste in movies. I'll tell that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, everybody goes to bed. We cut in on the Walsh's, um, Jim and Cindy. And she's like, I don't know, Jim. This might have been a bad idea. What if they fuck? And he's like, I, he's like, you know what? I'll talk to him tomorrow. It's going to be fine. Don't worry about it, Cindy. And now Cindy is like up all night, like uh, you know, going nuts about this thing and listening to all the noises. And someone needs to teach Cheryl how to open a door and close a door at night. The kachunks that I'm hearing, I'm like, lady, it's easier to do this. Also, go through the secret bathroom passageway. Thank you, thank you. That's just what I was about to say. I could not fucking believe this. It's like this is what you have the connecting bathroom for. This is how Brendan and Branda do it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, Cheryl, Cheryl, Cheryl. I'll show you how I get into his room at night. <laughs> it's insane. She comes in from the hallway. Cindy's a fucking maniac too, though, because like any a pin drops and she's just she just jumps up like Nosferatu or something. <laughs> she hears bat wings in the window. <laughs> well, that's what I love. There's like this little montage of like Brandon is laying there looking at the clock, like, oh man, is she gonna come? Because she doesn't give a definitive answer about it. Cheryl, you know, she's just like. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I'll think about it. So it's like Brandon's looking at the clock, and it's like, you know, 1222. Then it's like Cheryl's looking at the clock. It's 1245. And then it's just fucking Mrs. Cindy Walsh just laying in bed, totally eyes wide, a line from her husband uh, from just a few hours ago, rattling around in her brain, haunting her like a Marley (laughs) brother, which is, you think she'll stay there? Oh, in, right, yeah. Because she's like, oh, you know, she's in fucking... Cindy's like, well, she's sleeping in Brenda's room. And then Jim Walsh is just like, you think she'll stay there? Jim Walsh, perpetually looking for the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they... they we get in, we get some sexy kissing going on here. More nipple action from uh, Mr. Jason Priestley. And Absolutely. It, it's a hard cut. Uh, more than a, a confirmed sex happens for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, she Cindy or uh, uh, Cheryl is like, "Hey, oh, yeah. Brandon, do you have protection?" And he pulls out a handgun. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I wish he pulled out a handgun because what he does instead is says something fucking terrifying, like, "Yeah, I do." 
but you know, I don't need it when I'm around the ones I love or something. It's oh, did something. He say uh, that? Did I miss it's, that? It's some fucking horseshit. Uh, like my, it's like emotional protection yes. or something. No, no, it's it's. Uh, 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 I, I've had a lot of. I have a lot of protection, but I've never had any. I have done nothing to protect. Yes. That's what it is, but I've uh, never had anything to protect. And I was like, hey, dude, put a fucking Jimmy hat on well, that also dick. Also, a weird way to tell your girlfriend you don't have a dick. You don't have a cock at all. <laughs> I got nothing to protect. It's just a bump down there. <laughs> the other day, my penis grew, and I was like, Jesus, I've been missing out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then the ne- and here's the thing, Brandon. You know, you, you have sex with your girlfriend in your um, in your parents' house night of... Next morning, just be really excited to yourself. He starts playing jump, jive, and whale, is dancing around the fucking house, and everyone's like, well, I guess Brandon had sex last night. <laughs> There's no other way to interpret it. It's like, oh, wow, how about that? Our underage son got it wet last night. Are you proud of yourself, Cindy? He makes orange <laughs> juice. Is- he does make orange the, juice. The, the big one is uh, he's heading out with uh, uh, Cheryl because she wants to see the fu- the celeb, the movie stars. <laughs> oh, uh, my God. This and, was embarrassing. And he pats Jim Walsh on the chest and says, take it easy, big guy. <laughs> you yeah. might as well wear a T-shirt that said, I fucked this woman last night. You might as well give him the condom and be like, you take care of that for me, big guy. Talk to you later. Jeez. Yeah. Let <laughs> yeah. me tell you. Let me tell you right now. If I, at the age of 17, or actually probably now at pushing 36, went up to my father and slapped him on the chest and said, take it easy, big guy, (laughs) oh, there'd be trouble. (laughs) There'd be trouble, and it would be fucking loud. Uh, So they go out on the town. We get another uh, montage. We get to see that Johnny Rockets again. This thing gets a lot of... Fuck between this show and Melrose Place. It's a national monument. I think that's like it replaces the Capitol <laughs> Records building. <laughs> like that's what LA is known for. And we can't show the sign because I think no, the no. Hollywood sign actually has some licensing. I think you can't show it unless you pay them. Oh, yeah, really? no, that I bet sense. that's expensive as hell. Yeah, definitely. I bet you that's another thing Larry Cohen got. <laughs> oh, <this laughs> is, he was like, ah, nope, pay me. Pay me for it. <laughs> uh, so they're going to go out. To a, a fun brunch and look, look, you know, hit the strip kind of a thing. What are you going to say, Andrew? No, it's, it's just like she is. I mean, this is, it's fucking humiliating. Like, she is like hanging out of Brandon's car window, taking pictures of houses. She's like, wow, look at that one. Which celebrity lives there? And he's like, I don't know, Cher. And she's <laughs> like, oh, really? Oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> it's just, I hate feeling embarrassed for characters on television shows and movies and this was making me so uncomfortable <laughs> they go to a chic brunch um and they're gonna meet up with dylan uh, now was which... this steve was this supposed to be the restaurant that's like in the hotel where dylan lives i think so because i think he says bring her by the hotel so it would make sense <laughs> oh okay um because like, oh i want to meet her bring her by the hotel and like he she does and she's like ooh upgrade and uh, <laughs> well yeah obviously <laughs> you're right when you're right you're right <laughs> so she's like really you know she she you know she likes Dylan right away she's like ooh do you know movie stars and he's like yeah a couple not a big deal or anything he's like I could take you to, to meet some tonight at this club it's called the Viper Room <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Dude, they should uh, go. No, they call it contact, but it's contact. I, I think it should be the Viper Room. Yeah. Well, here's probably. the thing: like, if it was the Viper Room, though, you'd need like a shitty band playing. Sure. Where I believe when we go to Contact Club a few scenes from now, it's like just a DJ. It's like a dance club. I do have to say though, uh, Cheryl continuing her streak of humiliating herself. When they get into this restaurant, they're being seated for brunch. She says to the hostess, "She's like." Hey, so uh, do you know if any celebrities are here right now? (laughs) And this lady's like, I don't fucking know. (laughs) And after, like, Brandon's like, oh, oh, so here's my friend Dylan. I got to go take a shit. I'll be right back. (laughs) And they should have gone to the Viper Room. They should have gone to the Viper Room because then they could find a celebrity laying outside on the pavement. Oh, (laughs) man. (laughs) Making light of tragedies. Uh,. No, but then this woman circles back to the table. She's like, Cheryl's like, hey, any celebrities yet? And I was like, 
dude, someone tell her to chill out. Dylan, sit her down right here and just be like, hey, you can't really be doing that right now. It's uh, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. Well, no, that's why he starts flirting with her a little bit. Because like, oh, man, could you stop? Fuck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and they're just being friendly, but she's like, "Oh, cool." They're they're hitting it off really well, so they're, he's gonna take her to Contact Club, and like, Brandon's like, "Oh, okay, I guess, I guess that's what we're doing tonight. Like, we're just hanging out with Jill, and kind of sucks." Um, <laughs> uh, so then we're getting ready, and Brandon is dressed like he's about to introduce Soul Asylum at fucking Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> Once again. <laughs> Soul Asylum. <laughs> Playing the same, the only one song they have. <laughs> no, they we've, play Misery, dude. They play <laughs> Misery. We've got a great show here tonight. I'm Donald Trump, and Soul Asylum is here. Stick around. <laughs> uh, so Brenda is, is dressed like Esmeralda from The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and she's really excited. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, she's talking about this necklace because like she's getting dressed up to go babysitting. Sure, like Brandon has to drop her off first before they go to contact club, and Brenda is like, she's got this necklace on, and again, like because first we had that comment about the the gym teacher, uh, and then she's going to Cheryl. She's like, so hey Cheryl, uh, take a look at this necklace. I'm going to wear babysitting tonight. It's not too queer or dangly, is it? And I was like, Brenda, what is your problem in this episode? <laughs> It is weird. I, I I actually didn't even hear queer, but I, I buy it. I believe it happened. I, I think I remember it. I could have I could have misheard. No, no, I, I, I think you're right. The episode on here, so I'm going to put the subtitles on. It's on mute. This is what I've started doing, by the way, to just keep the experience going as we talk about these shows. And um, so they're going to drop her. Dylan shows up with his fucking Porsche, and he's like, and Brandon's got his shit box, and she's like, and. You know, Cheryl is like, you know, I always kind of wanted to ride in a convertible in L.A. Can Dylan drive me? And he's like, oh, yep. okay. He's, I'll, I'll, I guess we're- he starts getting so protective. It's really kind of outrageous. It is kind of outrageous. He's being a dick. And he keeps like, prying, immediately He goes too. into Brandon Dick. Yes. He goes, he's what? Prying he, or crying? Uh, prying, because then he finds probably, out. Probably both, but yeah. <laughs> he, well, yeah, definitely both, because he finds out that she lost her virginity to someone else. Oh, she, dude, when he learns that, it's a fucking nuclear bomb. Because she, you know, he he drops her off at uh, he drops Brenda off at the at, at the the babysitter's house, the the teacher's house, and he he like shows up late to the club. Which also like the move should be like, okay, cool, Dylan, you follow me to this teacher thing to the teacher's house, and yes. then we'll all go together. Because they also say like it's impossible to get into the contact club. Like you, and, you know, Dylan's a hot shit, so like, everybody needs to be together to get into this. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of shitty that they go in without him. Yes. Uh, but also, like, I don't, I think, is Dylan's car, is it just one of those, like, two-seaters? Is that what the problem is? I think that might also be the it's, issue. It's a Porsche. I see. It's a Porsche. I, are, the, so are, I are, are all Porsches not two-seaters? All, not all of them. Oh, okay. Sorry, Cabin, I drive a Prius. I, you know. <laughs> Cabin with his insights from Connecticut right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give you some uh, knowledge here. The worst... <laughs> I will say the most awkward thing that happens in this entire fucking episode is Brandon arriving in this club and he looks down and it's like a rhythm of the night esque song. Yes. Yep. yep. And fucking Cheryl and Dylan are dancing like it's fucking Moonlight Serenade. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it's dancing that does not fit the rhythm of the song. And you're totally right. And this was the, the one time that I was like, okay, like you're dancing off rhythm close like that. All right, Brandon, I kind of get it right here at yes. least. Yes. Well, they're, they're really close. To- they're kind of head to head almost and then like Brandon just like hey man thanks for fucking letting me in the club dude and he's like oh I left your name at the bouncer like, yeah well he fucking forgot it and well she's- Brandon well, ha- no but hang on a second Brandon Brandon should get the shit kicked out of him by two huge dudes fucking Vito and Bafo because like the contact club like all these people are trying to get in and he runs up and like just like barges through the door. Yes. And all these other people start storming the front door to this club. It's like the bouncers would go in, they would fucking find that guy, mm-hmm. and they would kick the shit out of him in a back alley. Especially how he ends his uh, time here. He's getting bounced fucking hard. Oh, dude. Like <laughs> like a hardcore Jazzy Jeffing right here. So, like, you know, he's like, sto- uh, she goes to the bathroom. 
And Dylan's like, oh, man, your girlfriend is wild, man. And he's like, yeah, well, this was supposed to be our night. And he's like, uh, he's like, she was hit. Or he's like, are you hitting on my girl right now? He's like, which is, and this is not the right answer. No, she was hitting on me, which is like, the answer is no, nothing's happening. You know what yep, I mean? Like, yep. yep. And maybe tomorrow you want to talk to Brandy, be like, "Look, she was kind of flirting with me. You might want to watch her or something like that." But usually the movie is just like, "Oh no, no, what are you talking about? We're just pals, blah blah blah." But Brandon punches Dylan right now. Oh, 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 oh man, this is not something you do. <laughs> and I think it is a testament to how fucking rad Dylan McKay is, dude, because he's just like, "Hey, Brandon, like I know you just punched me in the face, but you really got to figure out who your friends are, man." And that's exactly where I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to hit you back. I'm just going to fucking leave. It was a great move by him. Great line. Oh, yeah. It's total, totally great. I, totally I, great. I, 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 he should have took his head off. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you know, I know everybody should not be fighting or anything. But he so Dylan's in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Spin off. He's doing uh, 90210 years in jail. <laughs> well, Steve, was, any any of these kids wind up going to jail, doing any time on the show? Uh, I think Dylan does get arrested maybe once or twice, but also Dylan uh, had a little stint on Oz. So that's if you want to watch oh, Dylan and right. Luke Perry was on Oz for a little bit, so you can watch Dylan in prison. Wow, if you want. Oz Dylan, Luke huh? Perry. <laughs> Luke Perry was fucking awesome on Oz. Actually, yeah, he was like a preacher. He had a beard. It was, it was working for me. Now, uh, Steve, like, just uh, this is another show. I know we both watched. I don't know if you guys watched it too. Does he? Is he the one that gets buried alive behind the wall? He is. Yeah. Ooh, that's fucking awesome, man. Oz was a great. I show. never saw it. Oh, dude, uh, strong recommend, man. So uh, she comes back, and he's he's already playing party cop because that's Brandon's move <laughs> always, which is like, it's like, how many have you had already? He's like, I don't know. And he's like, all right, so uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, tonight was supposed to be special because we just had sex. And this is when she says, like, that wasn't even my first time. And immediately he's like fucking, it's the fu he's Joe MacArthur. He wants names and, and information. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. Like, where are these guys' papers? I need to know everything <laughs> hey, about them. Hey, did you fuck my long-distance girlfriend? <laughs> did you fuck my long-distance girlfriend? <laughs> Not even long-distance. They were broken up. He's got no they right to have this, you know? Because he could have fucked in, in, in Los Angeles at some point. Yeah, he was He was like, you got to almost third base with that girl in the, in the hot tub not three episodes oh marianne whatever the fuck yeah you're and totally cheryl right cheryl is just visiting and she's gonna go back to minneapolis keep it light you you're not gonna marry this girl exactly you'll, you'll notice that fucking verified piece of garbage brendan doesn't bring up her the little fucking hot tub incident to her he, he does not he decides to keep it to himself that fucking piece of garbage <laughs> <laughs> you should have fucking nutted in that hot tub Absolutely. It's true. And he could, I mean, like, and that's the thing is he's like, who was it? Blah, blah, blah. She's like, we were broken up. You don't believe in long distance relationships. And he's like, uh, and then she storms out and he <laughs> what fucking smacks. Eh. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> and he smashes her drink on the bar. And I'm like, dude, you are getting the shit kicked out of you at this bar. Here's the thing, Steve, because it's, it's, it's like a super smash. It's not like he picked it up and smashed it on the bar. He he backhands yes. this drink and the glass goes fucking flying <laughs> and i was like okay now you are definitely getting jazzy jeff out of this fucking club mm, yeah you're getting like you're getting no you're getting fucking um uh 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 donny brasco to the bathroom man they're yeah. the shit out of you <laughs> where's alec baldwin's guys <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, dude, you're getting the fucking cooler, absolutely. <laughs> because like, seriously, like, you could fucking hurt somebody. The bartender probably has glass in her hair. That's not cool. Exactly. It's so fucking dangerous. And the weirdest thing is like, all the extras just kind of like turn and look like, huh, how about that? Here at Contact Club, that happens every night. Maybe that's why it's called the Contact oh. Club. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so he, he storms out, she goes into a cab, he's going frantic looking for her, we cut to Brenda's stupid storyline, where she's just, you know, it, it's just her and the, she goes to the house, it's the hunky teacher, blah blah blah, his wife's kind of mean, uh, uh, Oh, this woman's awful, dude, I'm sorry, this wife <laughs> is terrible. Not that and it jacket. Makes you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, she's like, not that jacket, and the dude's like, why? And she's like, because you're wearing two shades of the same color, you Fucking idiot. <laughs> and then you find out, by the way, that they're just going to the movies. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, and anybody see who the, the the boy is in this scene? The little kid? No. Oh, Sleepless in Seattle, my yep. friend. Oh, is that right? Mm-hmm. Would you report these... the next year? These uh these these little children are fucking monsters though. Yeah, they're they just are. monsters immediately. Um, she Kelly to, well, and Donna Brenda's show. trying to be nice to one of these kids, and she's like, "Oh, you know, guess what I got in my purse?" And he's like, "Let me say," and he takes it, and dumps <laughs> everything out. I was also, like, this well, guy's just a fucking math teacher in high school. This is a pretty nice house. Yeah, I, I yeah I had a question about that. I was like, "All right, well, what does the wife do?" Because you're just a fucking algebra teacher, dude. Oh, I bet he's on the take. Oh, <laughs> how, how how exactly is a teacher on the take? He's selling answers to the rich kids. Oh, right. I, I maybe, see. Selling or maybe he's exactly. selling drugs to the students. Also, oh, that would be he could, something. He could be running an Ernie Hudson in the substitute esque yeah. state. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> like the end of the episode, they have to throw him off a fucking roof. <laughs> That would be fucking excellent. I'll tell you what. Uh, they- Ke- Kelly and Donna show up because they want to see. They all have a crush on this teacher. They just want to see his house and smell his underwear, which they do. Uh-huh. Man, Donna is just. Uh, and I assume as the show goes on, I mean, because she became Tori Spelling sure. from this show, that like Donna has more to do. But dude, here is my impression of Donna uh, over the last five episodes. Uh. <laughs> Hey, Kelly. <laughs> She's we're gonna need just more v- breathing out of her mouth. It's we're terrible. We're going to need more ventilators. Donna is here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's almost as if she wouldn't have got that job if she wasn't related to the producer of the show. Yeah, that is really something to think about. It's like all the actors are on one level, and then Donna's down here for some reason. Do you think during these first five episodes, and however long this continues until Donna gets a Donna-centric episode, that Aaron Spelling was like, you know what I think you should do? Explore the character of Donna a little more. What do you think about that? How about getting Donna an episode? <laughs> yep. I think that's, that's what this was. It was like, okay, the story, so the episode is uh, Brenda is flirting with her math teacher, and she get, there's a lot of silly stuff with her and the kids. Well, I don't know. Maybe Donna showed up right now. <laughs> it yep. makes no sense for the friends to show up. Why would you even tell them where he lives? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, Aaron. Actually, we can get that droning noise that uh, happens when she opens her mouth. We can get that done in post. We can clear <laughs> that right up. That's, that's no problem. I will say, I think Kelly Taylor may have the line of the episode, though, because they, first of all, they cop to rifling through this man's underwear drawer and find a photo album, which I guess you put in an underwear drawer? Question mark. It's a sex uh, photo album. It has to yeah, be. it's got to be right. Well, they're looking at all these old photos of like this dude back in the day, and Kelly just goes, "Brenda, check out this mustache." <laughs> I was dying. Uh, you know, I couldn't help but notice that Kelly has the line of the episode. What if uh, Donna said it? <laughs> you know, Donna might like mustaches too. <laughs> what if? Uh, oh, you know, uh, they go to uh, they go to the the contact club, and you know who's working the door? It's Donna. <laughs> you know, you could have Brenda babysitting Donna. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a new angle? You know, uh, the Walshes were supposed to go to the airport to pick up Cheryl, but, you know, what about if Donna went? (laughs) Oh, confirmation, by the way, because this episode uh, that I have, uh, I'm watching it again right now, watching it back, it's a little behind where we are. Confirmation that what Brenda says is, is this necklace too, and they hyphenated it, queer dangly. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Yeah, that's, that's something it's fucking not- Brenda. <laughs> so, uh, you th- know, what if Donna said queer dangly? <laughs> so, <laughs> she, uh, they're just looking through this guy's uh, photo album, and then the, the wife and husband show up, and they're like, oh my God. And the, and the dude, first of all, the dude is way into this, and I, I, I don't like this guy even at all. It's like, insane, dude. He goes, hi, girls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And like he's like, oh, you found my photo album, huh? It was just lying around because he knows where that photo album was. And Absolutely. he knows what they were looking at. Dude, he knows that they fucking broke into his underwear drawer and he's covering for these children. But I have to say, the wife, hilarious line here. She's like, it's bad enough the movie was terrible, but now I come home and these girls are in my house. So this episode came out in 1990. Oh, nice. I was, in October of, October of I 1990. I'm so, so happy someone looked this up. 
so what they could be watching um, mm. is Marked for Death, which came out in October 5th. <laughs> uh, reversal. Gonna, uh, well, actually, I was about to say Marked for Death. If this was October 25th and it came out October 5th, it was long gone from theaters. But back then, you still had some, you had longer runs in That's theaters because there were less my, movies. My money is totally on Reversal of Fortune. <laughs> Reversal of 100%. Fortune. 100%. No, but I mean, that movie's, pr- like, you know, it got Oscar buzz and such. You're not, you're what is that movie? wearing that green jacket to marked for death? <laughs> no, no, no. That's Reversal of Fortune fucking I, wear. I've got, a, I've got a fucking banger coming up. So uh, Wait, 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 though. What is Reversal of Fortune? That's the uh, Klaus von Bülow movie uh, with... Uh, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Irons. Irons and Glenn oh, Close. okay. Yeah, I never saw and, uh, uh Ron Silver as Dershowitz. That's right. Yeah. No. It's yeah. like uh-huh. a Ron. It's like a Ron. It's like an Alan Dershowitz hero movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh <laughs> it well. Kind of is. It's kind Thanks of amazing. Anyway. <laughs> um, something called Avalon, which I've never heard of. Uh, oh. The Grifters, great movie. Ooh, yeah. I think I've so seen they, Avalon. I'm... Some Do- some Don Johnson movie called The Hot Spot. Oh, that's really that's uh, Dennis Hopper directed that. Uh, Quigley Down Under. That, oh, that's what they saw. Jenner, young, uh, not, young Jennifer Connelly's also in the hot spot, I think. Ooh. Uh, yes, I, I see her on the poster. Uh, Night of the Living Dead remake. Something called uh-huh. something called White Palace looks erotic. Oh, that's James Spader fucking uh, Susan Sarandon. Dude, I'm, I'm enjoying Chris Cabot knowing all these movies. Uh, the Sheltering Sky. Uh, never ending. You have selected The Sheltering Sky. <laughs> <laughs> never Ending Story 2, the next chapter. Graveyard Shift, and what I believe the movie they saw, because she said it's so bad, Troll 2 was in theater. <laughs> <laughs> well, honey, uh, I'm done teaching algebra for the no. week. W- what do you say we go to the movies and take in Troll 2? <laughs> I think it's either Reversal of Fortune or The Sheltering Sky, because that's a Bertolucci picture. And I bet you, since they have this fucking nice fancy house, despite whatever they make... They like to pretend they're fancier than. Oh, they are. I see. I oh. think that might be. No, I th- listen. Yeah. I think you're, you're n- I think it's troll. T- I think it's troll too. Because you're going. Because then she yeah. comes back and she's like, "You girls don't piss on hospitality. Don't go through his underwear." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not going to sleep a wink tonight, sweetheart. I'm so scared of that troll too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see how that boy just melted like that? <laughs> uh, so whatever. That's like the end of that storyline. Brenda comes home uh, and she finds out from Jim and Cindy that uh, Cheryl has run away from home. Dun dun dun. And all this stuff in the. the shittiest line of Cindy Walsh of the episode is uh, like, oh yeah, she had all these problems. Did you know that her parents were divorced? And she, uh, and, and uh, I think Cindy is just like, yeah, that tells you what happened last night, which means divorced kids give it up easy, man. <laughs> wow, that's outrageous. I totally missed that. That's it's nuts. A, well, because the, the whole weird double, double standard of this episode is everyone's like, the parents are like upset more about like sex happening in their house, but not so much that Brandon's getting it wet. But if it was Brenda, they'd be fucking, her head would be on a fucking pike. Right. Oh, man. It's, yep. Well, yep. this is like a whole parenting thing of like, boys will be boys, you go get them. But if they come near a girl of mine, I got a shotgun. Ex- exactly. And it's such, it's such horse shit. And also, like, of course, the girl that sleeps with your son has to be a harlot you know what i mean a divorced <laughs> harlot a divorced harlot well so she's like she's not divorced herself well that's a broken home harlot i should right. say i bet she listens to guns and roses too <laughs> oh yeah that was dangerous music around now so brandon goes to dylan's just to see if he's heard from her she's there Br- dylan assures him that nothing happened great she- dylan line right here though dude he goes uh because like he Brandon's trying to like you know sort of make nice with him here without apologizing for punching him in the face by the way piece of shit move Brandon but Dylan just goes Brandon that girl's got problems <laughs> she's in the back puking her guts out <laughs> yeah. she is uh, so he's like I'm just gonna go out for a while man me and I'm actually gonna make it to the Viper room there's some good blow I gotta do I'll, t- I'll talk to you guys later just and, and again Dylan salt of the earth is just he got punched in the face he's like if you guys need like room service or something just just feel free to order it it's cool I'll be giving some coke to my friend River <laughs> I got some good brown oh <laughs> so it's been like 30 years we could make yeah, fun of River it's Phoenix it's fine I guess so. <laughs> He's not going to come back and get us. Yeah. Dude, I hope he fucking haunts your house now. <laughs> Why not? There'll be other ghosts in here anyway. What's going on? 
when he was uh, uh <laughs> no uh, you, could, uh, you know what i'm gonna do it when he was on the floor uh some guy walked up to him, was like you lost today kid <laughs> Doesn't mean you have to like it. Oh, my oh goodness. God. Put a hat over his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Gus Van Sant's going to come to your house and strangle you to death. <laughs> so uh, so uh, Dylan leaves. Brandon and uh, Cheryl sort of have it out here. This is when she reveals that her... And he didn't know that her parents were divorced, which is very bizarre to me. Like... That's it, weird. It seems like something she told him that he just never fucking bothered to pay attention to. She's like, and I hate my stepfather and all this stuff. He's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> that, the way that she starts this, uh, or maybe she does the parents thing first. There's a fucking hilarious, like she's trying to come clean and be straight with him. And she just goes, there's one more thing I forgot to tell you about. Pause, pause. I ran away from home. <laughs> it's, it's such bad delivery. I love it. And, you know, like, she, you know, she's like, oh, I always had to be a certain way with you, the Walshes, because you guys fucking walk on water uh-huh. and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, yeah, we kind of do. Um, <laughs> and it's like, you know what? Oh, man, you, you running away from a broken home and all this shit, and whatever's going on between you and your stepdad, which I'm not going to investigate. You know what's going to solve this problem? Some ice cream. Yep. Yep. We're going to need lots of ice cream because we're babies. <laughs> it's true. We're just little babies and we're playing with bullshit because we're babies. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> It is a very kiddie way to solve a problem, though. It's like, you know what would be great right now? A bunch of ice cream! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, yeah so, something is so bad that you ran away from home and flew fucking 2,000 miles away, but ice cream's going to fix it. Yay! <laughs> Um, so they do that. The Walshes are having their own fucking ice cream. By the way, the hilarious thing, it's it's clearly Briar's ice cream, um, but they blacked out the bottom part of the bre- the B so they don't do the product placement, which makes it Pryor's ice cream, which is actually <laughs> perfect for the Walsh family. It's Richard Pryor ice cream. <laughs> I had a, a, a hilarious laugh at some set design here because they're all sitting around eating ice cream and... Uh, Cindy has this huge soup bowl that she's using with like one scoop of ice cream in it. I was like, that's such a waste of dishes. <laughs> um, what, what, what if we, instead of using Briar's ice cream, we use Donna's ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> she made it last night at home. <laughs> it's supposed to be really good. <laughs> um, so, you know, Brandon comes home and again, like, if Brenda brought a boy home uh, from Minneapolis that ran away from home, the yelling, no one is going to sleep. But Dylan, but Brandon goes upstairs and like, uh, I think Jim is like, we need to talk about this right. And he's like, Dad, could we do it tomorrow? Because I'm really beat. And by the way, I've already had all the ice cream I can stand. Yep. Night. Again, Andrew Jupin says this to Andy Jupin. There is a you get your fucking ass down here. Exactly. I didn't mean ice cream, motherfucker. Ice We're cream. Talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so then the next day, everything's okay. Uh, Sh- Cheryl is leaving again in a taxi cab. Like, I'm sorry, Cindy. You've got to drive this girl to the airport. I know it's a fucking hassle on a Sunday, but yep. you've got to drive this girl to the airport. Look, Cheryl. Cheryl, I find this guy on the on, on the sidewalk. He was he was just walking on the sidewalk, and he said he would drive you. Uh, and and you should just, you know, get your stuff in his back. <laughs> get in there. She was an American girl. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Welcome to the fucking Black Dahlia, dude. You've got to drive this girl to the airport. This is a 16 year old girl just taking a cab to the airport, you assholes. It's insane. Uh, so she's about, she's ready to leave. And um, as she's walking out, she's telling Brandon, like, you know, I'm sorry. She goes, I know that I slept with somebody else, which you'll never forgive me for. Again, you were fucking broken up. This yeah, girl has dude. nothing to apologize for. Not, not a damn thing. Uh, there is kind of a hilarious thing when she's, she is like, She's getting all the suitcase stuff finally packed, and Brandon's like sort of helping her, uh, help her. Like, oh. <laughs> like fold up that mattress or whatever. And she's like, he says something about like, oh, like what are you gonna do now or something like that. And he's like, or she says, uh, yeah, well, I can't exactly just live out here. I can't afford that. Blah blah blah. And she goes, give me a couple years. I'll be back. Oh yeah, no, she yeah. won't. No, you yeah. won't. <laughs> uh, so she, as she's leaving, she's like, you know. 
I will say, though, uh, you know, it was the most romantic love I've ever had. And, you know, it made me realize one thing. And then there's the honk of the cab. And she's like, I got to go. And he's like, what? What did it make you realize? Uh-huh. And then as she's leaving, she goes, you're an amazing lover, Brandon. <laughs> And Brenda is just like sitting in the living room reading a magazine and almost throws but up. That is like the biggest <laughs> pity compliment I've ever heard. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you are a wonderful lover. Fuck you, 17 year old kid. Uh, you know what it really made me realize is you know what? I'm just, I'm done with sex for a while. Guys just don't work <laughs> for me. This is, I tried twice, you know, just not, not my thing. Um, but. Oh, there's a great line from because we're about to talk about Jim Walsh right now in the basketball scene. But there's an amazing line earlier in the episode when no, it's unconfirmed about what happened. Oh, it's, it's actually after when Cindy says, "Well, last night makes a lot of sense now that she's divorced." And Jim Walsh retorts, "Well, what happened last night is up to a lot of interpretation," <laughs> which is an amazing <laughs> thing. Like Cindy, it could have been hand stuff. There could have yep. been mouth stuff. Who knows? Yep. That's exa- that is exactly what he's referring to. Exactly. Like, we don't know that they actually had sex, you know, the intercourse. Like, maybe there was just some 69 right. going on. <laughs> or, like, little, little know, kid dry humping. Yeah. You know, Cindy, there's this thing called uh, third input they're talking about. <laughs> Come I, don't, on. I, don't, I don't know. It could be anything. Could be third. anything. I, you know what, Chris Kevin? I got to tell you, I have not heard the expression third input in probably 20 I've, years. Yes, because it's 1990. Hold on a second. He's got, he's got you there. Can, Chris, can you define this? I've literally never heard that before. This, is this ass it, stuff? Yes, that's anal sex. Okay. Yep. Yep. Thank wow, you. that takes me back. <laughs> I don't. Uh, oh, that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Long time. Old anal sex. <laughs> Oh, used to go by the name Darth Third Input. <laughs> oh, anal one, Kenobi. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Uh, third Input, that's Sith language. We can't understand. <laughs> oh, we have to get the Third Input Wayfinder. Cunnilingus, oh, eating her out. That's Sith technology. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, C-3PO's eyes turn red when he has to talk about it. <laughs> ass! It's ass stuff! But I'm... I'm uh, Master, I, I can't read the Kama Sutra. It is against my programming. <laughs> so we end on this basketball scene. It's just t- a father and a son shooting hoops while this girl is getting fucking slayed on the side of the highway. With, with Jim Walsh's werewolf shoulders. Dude, yeah. he, Dude he It's looks, Teen Wolf! He, he, it is Teen Wolf. He's got this red, t- this Soviet red tank top on. He looks like a tiny Zangief. <laughs> he definitely does. But this he, is also patchy shit. This looks like he rubbed like glue all over himself and then ru- rubbed himself on the fucking floor of a barber shop. Oh, ew. it's your classic. Uh, uh, I don't. I, I don't have his genealogy in front of me. Your Middle Eastern, not Middle Eastern. Your Eastern European uh, curse, where it's just like hair goes everywhere except the top. Man, it's just. Yep. <laughs> yep. That is exactly what that is, and it's crazy because it's like I'm sorry, dude. Like. Well, one, like, just in general, you're on a TV show. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know that your shoulders and back <laughs> are going to be on television also. How about a T-shirt, But at the same guy? time, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, how about a T-shirt? But everybody likes a tank top. I mean, the thing is, it should also be like a, you know, James Eckhouse's character, Jim Walsh, like, getting into the Beverly Hills lifestyle. Like, that is a waxed back. Oh, like, that- oh, a 40-year-old virgin-esque scene? <laughs> Absolutely, dude. I mean, he should. It should be as smooth as a fucking bowling alley. Yeah, lane, dude, I you think you're I mean? right. He should get into Beverly Hills culture in a big bad way and become like a plastic surgery addict. <laughs> He's just got like a oh weird God, face. <laughs> yeah, I uh, started waxing my back. Why did you do? Why did you do that, Jim? Ah, Patty told me to do it. <laughs> Who's Patty? Oh, she's my secretary. Oh. <laughs> no, it's all falling apart. <laughs> you know what? If uh, Donna shaved his back, <laughs> uh, so it's just like this scene. We're shooting hoops. We're learning about life, and it's you know um, basically like, hey, Dad, I, I I totally nailed that broad, and it's like. Well, so long as you're careful. If it was Brenda, I'd fucking lose my mind. <laughs> End of episode. Yep. Uh, uh, no, there is one big thing here. He's like, I uh, I know I don't have to give you the sex talk, Brenda. I did that when you were ten. Yeah. Wow, that's a little little early. Little early there, buddy. <laughs> 
And well, like, Jim, Jim Walsh likes to get stuff out of the way, dude. I know. It was probably after a couple belts of scotch, and he was like, <laughs> oh, listen here, Brendan. <laughs> He uh, he also like Brandon is like just tell mom we were careful okay and then like Jim Walsh is kind of hinting like details yeah oh definitely because like the last line of the episode is like well come on dad you always tell me never kiss and tell <laughs> I was like what conversations are you having with your father dude I've never <laughs> right, spoken right, with Brandon, my father right. like this don't kiss and tell number one number two hit them back walls okay <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, so that's the end of the episode. As we do here at the end of the show, we always kind of ask everybody for a parting shot. Endor, are you excited to continue this journey? We'll start with Eric Siska. Uh, you know, I, I am excited. This was probably one of my, I think this might be my favorite um, mm. 9021 episode that we've seen so far. Just because it's like, you get to see Brandon really being more annoying than usual i don't know there was a lot going on in this episode it was fun it was child endangerment up the wazoo and that's always great by the way the actress that played cheryl paula irvine was in phantasm 2 and 3 which are movies i recommend you don't watch in addition to that she was also she played the role of mad donna in an episode of the super mario brothers super show oh Oh, no we might want to revisit that on ad actually that's a good idea. Oh, I'd go back there in a heartbeat. Uh, Chris Cabin? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, that's a hell yeah? Yeah, hell yeah. No, yeah, it's great. I get pissed off at kids. <laughs> it's fantastic. I feel like Clint Eastwood. It does get your blood going, doesn't it? Yeah, it's pretty wonderful. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. Uh, uh, Andrew? I will say I was kind of disappointed by this episode, and I'll tell you why. Not enough of the characters that I care about. Yep. And I know that on these kinds of soap opera shows like this, we vacillate between, like, you know, it's this character's episode, it's this character's episode, whatever. I totally get it. But, like, the fact that it was, it's an episode where it's just an A-B story and both of them are the Walsh siblings yeah. was a real problem. Especially when Brenda's lame-ass thing is just getting caught looking at a photo album it was just a lot. And I'm glad at least Dylan was here. We get uh, not enough Dylan. There's never enough Dylan <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. But like zero Steve Sanders. And my biggest question is, well, what was that mullet doing this week? <laughs> um, but no, I'm, I'm definitely excited to continue. It was a thing I was realizing because I had some time after I watched it this morning and I was like, fuck, I want to watch another episode. But like, I don't want to be then rewatching these like, you know, twice like that for the show. Yeah. And, and, and I don't want to watch stuff out of order. So I guess that's a good sign that I was like, I want more. Ready to but I have jump. to just be. Yeah, I got to I got to I got to dial it back a little bit here. But yeah. No, I'll I'll def be here uh, next week. Yeah, I'll be here, and I, I kind of agree with you, Andrew. I do miss some of those other characters. It's it's kind of weird, like especially like an early. Like, it's been a month, and we've had like six lines from Steve, and he's a huge character, and it's it's very bizarre. Uh, so that's our episode this week uh, for Beverly Hills Nine Hundred Two and Zero. Join us on Thursday for Melrose Place next week. Uh, by the way, we're going to get into some racial politics on the Beverly Hills Nine Hundred Two and Zero, and it's not going to be great. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure that's handled amazingly. <laughs> Uh, can't wait for, uh, later, I can't wait uh, for Sydney Walsh's take on the situation. <laughs> uh, tomorrow on the We Hit Movies Prime feed, you can catch us talking raw deal with special guest Jamel Bowie of the New York Times. We're really excited about that. Uh, later this week on your Patreon feed, uh, if you're at the $8 level, you will get a Nexus episode. A lot of great stuff coming out this week, guys. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a busy week here at the factory. Dude. So we got to get back to fucking work, man. Uh, so, until, <laughs> uh, so until tomorrow, I have been Steven Sadak. Andrew Jupin. Eric Siska. Chris Gabin. Take it easy and remain indoors. Okay. Oh, yeah. That was a HeadGum Podcast.